Right, so we can move to um, Nick and Rose's conversation. It's going to be a practical conversation about sort of like the challenges of actually running um, your pre-Christmas uh, market, both online or, or and offline. So you ready to go? Ready. Rosie, all, re all set? Um, I probably should explain what Bow House is because there's some new faces on here. So um, Bow House is a converted farm steading. We have um, seven food and drink businesses based underneath our roof, all in their own little production spaces. And um, we've also got two market garden plots. One's a fresh cut flower business and one's a veg plot as well. So all these businesses uh, work collaboratively together. We're not a farm shop, if you like. We're more of a production space that can sell direct to the customers. Um, but we're probably most well known, our public facing event is our monthly market weekends that we host that see um, large footfalls where we invite traders from across Scotland to attend and they pitch up in our main hall with a stall and sell their amazing produce direct to the consumers. So when uh, back in March when COVID came along um, we very quickly had to adapt, all of our events were cancelled um, so we changed tack and all, obviously all these producers had stock that was already either in the ground and sown, it was being produced or it was sent to slaughter or you know this process, the lead-in time for produce is much longer than lots of customers think. Um, so we had to keep that connection going so we approached Open Food Network and set up Bow House Link, which is our weekly click and collect order cycle where the traders upload their stock to the site. Um, we, we manage the sort of logistics and stock levels, pick and pack and send it to the customers as well as doing uh, collection and delivery. So that's kind of what happened for us way back when, and now we're kind of leading into Christmas. Normally, well, we, we do have our market weekends are back up and running and they've been quite successful. Um, but we're now looking towards Christmas. Christmas would normally be our huge event. We would last year we saw five and a half thousand people over two days at our events. Like they're normally kind of mental. Um, so we're really trying to break that. Obviously, we can't have those numbers. So we want people to be shopping online so they can still connect with the producers, um, but not necessarily have to come to the market weekend or just sort of shop a bit more, a bit sensibly through Bowhouse Link. Um, so we started planning our Christmas order cycle probably, I don't know, a couple of months ago, to be honest, because we had to speak to our traders that are already on Bowhouse Link and on Open Food Network and say, do you guys want to be involved? But we also asked all of our other traders who are attending the market weekends, um, because our market weekends run alongside the Bowhouse link, people can pre-order and come to the market and collect their produce. So we wanted to include as many traders in that order cycle as possible. Um, so the way we're doing it, there's lots of different ways you can do it, is that we are gonna keep doing our weekly order cycle up until basically Christmas. But as well as that, we're opening another order cycle on top of that from the start of the start of the end of November, I should really know this off by heart, <laughs> um, uh, it's going to start on the 30th of November and run until the 18th for orders. So this order cycle is going to be our like Christmas order cycle that you will then get your produce on the 22nd or the 23rd. But Bowhouse Link will still be running for essentials and general produce that we sell throughout the week and throughout the months um, for people just to keep shopping if they've not, they don't want to do the big Christmas shop with us. Um, so we have approached all of the traders, we've said to them, what products do you want on what order cycle? Because when they upload a product and they don't say to us which order cycle they want it to sit in, it could sit in both order cycles, which means that the same stock will tick down on the same order cycle. So depending on what kind of um, product it is or what kind of trader you have, we've said to them, look, you need to be very clear with what products you would like on the Christmas order cycle and if then they just sit on the Christmas order cycle or do you want them to appear on both but you need to appreciate that actually they need to be ready at different times um, depending on the order cycle. Um, so that's kind of where we're at but I know there's lots of different ways um, of doing it. We've not really 
promotion is something that I'm actually just was just did a lovely mind map on while we were talking about this and it's we're kind of stuck between um, lots of people want to come to our event and they are can be window shoppers which is kind of what we want to get away from and what a good positive thing about well one of the positive things for COVID for us if anything is that it's changed people's perception of us and Open Food Network has helped with that people really see us as this sort of market weekend, big weekend out, great day, but actually throughout the year and throughout all of the month, we're working away and um, collaborating with lots of different producers and we want to be seen as a food hub rather than just a market weekend. So this weekly connection to consumer and to producer through Bowhouse Link is really changing people's perception of us. And that's something that we want to um, continue in our Christmas order cycle and be a bit, people a bit more serious about the, the, is how easy it is to shop locally and through the producer we, producers we have on, on Bowhouse Link. So that's kind of roughly where we're at just now, a very quick summarize of, um, summary of what we're up to, if that makes sense. Thanks, Rosie. That's really useful and helpful. I wonder if there's any questions. Uh, if not, I've got a couple of things that came out of the, of the presentations earlier that I'd just like to, to run through with you. One is that I think Bowhouse is probably one of the best OFN shop fronts for events. I mean, a lot of a lot of people who use the Open Food Network came to uh, came to the Open Food Network as a producer or a grower and, and wanting to, to to use the online shop front and then have one or two events around the edge of that. You've very much always been about events and have come to Open Food Network because those events couldn't happen. And I'm just wondering. Is there, have you got any tips for other Open Food Network, or for any, for any sort of anybody in these strange times who's needing to use online instead of having events? Are there any ways that we could do some of that kind of getting together type stuff online when when we can't actually get together? Yesterday we in the in the webinar we talked about um, the producers doing a little showcase and the producers maybe recording a video of this is my farm and this is my chickens and this is you know how I link with Bow House and these are some of my products. I was wondering is there anything have you got any tips on how we might do that for the from the shoppers perspective is there any way that the shoppers can get involved with interactively? This is completely off the top of my head but I don't know. No, no that's a really interesting point and it's something that for us at Bow House you know, we if we really want to just be with people and we're all about the senses, you know, hearing, smelling, seeing, tasting the produce and meeting the maker. That's our slogan is meet the maker. Um, so we used to host workshops and demos where kids would get involved and they would be learning and they, because they'd be touching, they'd be seeing it, they'd be feeling it. Obviously, we can't do a lot of that. So it's been tricky to try and change what we are doing to to keep that that kind of flame alive, that kind of, I don't like the education, but just sort of keep that um, that that part of Bow House alive. And it is tricky. One thing we have done is we took part in a, oh goodness, what was it called? Uh, oh, something like um, Welcome to My Farm. And basically we um, went, I went around with a selfie mode and like ran around all the producers and talked through what they were doing at that moment and we had over 200 people watching us live and it got shared something ridiculous many of times so that kind of really honest approach we're really honest about everything we do and showed you know the butchery and all the meat hanging up and we're just really open about how everything happens and explain the way we do it and why we do it and what the best processes are and um, one thing we talked about yesterday was um the possibility like that kind of community feel of trying to get everyone to still come together during these times and um, even if we can't do it you know physically together what can we do so possibly possibly another short video just sort of saying or I quite uh, when we were chatting earlier the calendar of counting down the order cycle I almost thought that I, well, we could go around all the producers and get them to be like you've got five days left to order and then we could have like a calendar of people counting down all the different traders and then saying a couple of different words of why it's so important that 
customer support them during these times. So that might be quite a nice way of getting the traders involved and doing a bit of self-promotion um, and then sharing through our page as the hub um, out to all of our customers. So that might be something that might be quite nice is really, I mean, it's a bit of a logistical task trying to get everyone to commit to doing something and, and getting them on board, but that kind of community feel. We also talked about um, social media takeovers, which I said, yes, they does sort of stress me out a little bit a bit protective over our social media pages. Um, but that idea of sharing pictures, sharing information, sharing recipes um, is really nice and something we ask our customers all the time to send us pictures of what they've made with the produce. So if they've made like an amazing soup or a broth, goodness me, send me the picture. We'd love to share that recipe. And that, that's worked really well. People kind of have a little chat. We also have a, a private Facebook group page um, I think it's called Bowhouse Shoppers or something. So basically all of our shoppers can chat about things that they've got or they've ordered and they've used or they've they've created. And that's quite a nice sort of different chat page that people can blether away on if they like. I mean, it is tricky. And I think that community feel is was really strong in the first lockdown. And um, everyone sort of came together. And um, we also, but if it, people are a little bit sick of stuff that's online as well which is it's a tricky one I think but I think there's lots of different ways of doing it we also are working with our local food bank so we've created a, a product that we sell through OFN and it's a donation to the food bank and 100% of that donation goes to the food bank and um, there's different ways you can do that on the site but we've just taken ownership of it and we just make the payment to them every week um, and we're also working with our local um, village in Bloom, you know, like um, hanging baskets and things like that. They're selling a, a calendar this year. So I'm hoping to make a product so that they can sell their calendar through OFN. They don't need to worry about it. We can take all that slack. So it's just kind of, again, that promotes you as some a, an organization that has this value of community aspect. And then it helps them out as well, which is obviously a great cause. So. There's lots of different things we could do. Yeah, that's really helpful, Rosie. And it taps in for, to me for the, the point that Kay was making earlier that this might be a really difficult Christmas for a lot of people. They might well be on their own, and to feel part of a, a broader community, um, which might be the fact that by buying through Bowhouse, they are supporting their local farming community, and they've got connections with the people who actually grow and produce the food or it might be connections with other shoppers who are in a similar position. We're all in this boat together kind of thing. And, you know, fr from what you say, you've, you've got material from previous, you, you've got, um, you were talking about the, the video that you produced on from pr previous events. There may well be material in there. I noticed that people are really hungry for pictures of lots of people together because we don't see pe pe <laughs> pictures of people together anymore. So maybe dragging out some of that old footage and reminding people of, you know, what Bowhouse really stands for. That is also quite tricky as well because um, we have, I've got a whole archive of images of people having an amazing time, but if somebody doesn't read that this was pre-COVID and no one's wearing masks and they're not social distanced, that's a real tricky one to put on social media because people will quickly see it and go, hang on a minute, why is no one social, you know, keyboard warriors will jump on you quite quickly if they want to. Um, so again, trying to get images of people, I actually find people on, on their own or in groups of small groups with produce yeah. is um, an easier an easier post yeah. but you could do a throwback you could be like remember this last year but then you know is that going to make people sad as well i know it makes me a bit depressed when i look like back on all the christmas images and uh, wreath making but yeah definitely i think going back and and seeing images and pulling out and from getting new images as well people love pictures lots of text i find if you try and write too much on social media Unless you're, you know, you're, you're real hardcore followers, they'll read it, but short and snappy and, and sort of interesting and not all the time. I also find that if you post too much, people switch off and your algorithm on Facebook will just kick you out basically and start being like, you need to stop talking. Um, so drip, drip feeding at different times during the day, you can see on your social pages when your followers are online, that's also really interesting. And you can go on and target different people with promotions as well. You can always do ads. So 
right. different and I'd like to maybe bring in Kay and, and Louise here. Louise has been putting some stuff in the chat and might want to say a bit more about maybe encouraging customers and shoppers to use uh, TikTok or, or Reels to, to, to send in um, something which we, we could then sort of post and just sort of build that sense of, you know, there are lots of people out there who are using this shop front and we are part of a community. So I don't know, Louise or Kay, did you want to say any more about that idea? Um, no, oh, well. I know that Rosie, you like your social media, and I totally um, understand that because I, well, I used to manage a social media account, and when someone tried to take over, I was like, "No, no, hands off!" But um, I know that there's some um, newer things out there which I suppose have come into um, into their own with lockdown. People have gone a bit crazy about ju jumping around to different TikTok videos, etc. I just wonder whether there's something in that that you could um, encourage your customers to do um, when they pick up their produce or when they're cooking at home with your things they have or when they're eating, and whether that would uh, just be another way of encouraging um, a sense of community when we can't actually all physically get together. Um, and it's quite lighthearted too. Um, but uh, yeah, they were just some random thoughts, that's all. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. You could almost do a, um, I don't know what the incentive would be, but send us your your Christmas dance or something with your produce, with your box, with your bowhouse box, or yeah, something that what did you cook up and everyone's reaction of your meal or something like that, or even I was going to say like a veg Santa. How did you make a I don't know a Santa out of a carrot? Something ridiculous. I don't know. Um, don't want to waste the carrot. Obviously, it's a good carrot. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I like that. Yeah. Exactly. Good. I think that people are really interesting in those kind of things. So I, I'm not even sure that you need to actually offer them anything. Just the fact that they might be a part of a really funny video or something like that might be enough. I know that towards six o'clock when the lights are off, you have nothing else to do and it's either that or the telly you might be really interested in dancing in your kitchen with carrots <laughs> good um the other thought that came out of louise's presentation was the idea of, of national distribution and i know that what we're trying to build is local food systems but it, it came up briefly yesterday that um it might be that you know, there are certain products that are that are easily to, easily transported and that people might want to do national distribution and i don't know if this is something that bowhouse has ever considered but would you would you be willing to um to, pro to provide a, a sort of gift box that you would uh, louise mentioned that ofn has a has a deal with a courier service where we can get low cost national delivery but i wondered if there might be a case for a separate order cycle i know we're, we're talking a lot about you know a christmas order cycle and a weekly order cycle and maybe even a hamper order cycle that we discussed yesterday could could it be that there would be another order cycle that was for national distribution that we you know if bowhouse was promoted nationally then people could order a, a hogmanay box that would be delivered you know um in time for new year or, or something like that i think we would love to do that i think for us our core value is feeding our community so feeding our local villages and fife we're kind of in the east nook of fife which is sort of the elbow of fife and um, so we're trying to if, if we were to take on the central belt of scotland edinburgh and glasgow you know that's a big job um, and I think this is our first year and we're a really small team and we've only got a certain number of traders on the site. It's about balancing their stock as well. So if we were to open up to everyone, we'd see orders skyrocket and then we'd have to disappoint customers because the fields are only so big, the stock's only so much um, that if we even took it on, can we fulfill those orders? So it's kind of a, it's a bit of a scales. We've got to balance how many clusters we have with, with um, how much stock the traders have. And a lot of that is out of my control because it's people in the fields, you know, the, the farmers, the growers, the bakers, they're in charge of that. Um, unperishable things like alcohol, jars, things that can be made in advance and are not perishable for sure we could we could take on a sort of uh, UK wide courier service um, 
but again, these those, those individual traders that we work with, a lot of them have their own e-commerce site, um, and they're only really part of Bowhouse Link because they want to get to our customers, which is our community. Um, so if we were to take on that part for them, it's kind of another logistical challenge. I think it would work really well for different hubs and different geographical locations um, to kind of spread out a little bit more. Um, and, and a lot of our traders, sort of like, for example, our butchery at Bowhouse um, does couriers UK wide and, and they take that on themselves, but they sell through OFN doing it themselves. They've got their own shop front and they sell through us. Um, so yeah, maybe one day we could take it on. We could maybe just do a hamper order cycle that was UK wide. Um, but we're trying to keep it simple this year to make it as seamless as possible. But we'll see. We'll see if you do. Thank you, Rosie. And I noticed that we have a, a Massingbird here from Monday Distillery, and I'm wondering if you've thought about, you know, nationwide distribution and and whether your whiskey would be going out, um, whether that's a product that might be um, more appropriate for this kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So. Um... I, I'm actually a little small gin distillery um, in the heart of the Lincolnshire Wolds. Um, currently, e-commerce is all done through the South Ormsby Estate website, um, and we we deliver nationally, so anywhere within the UK. Um, through uh, we use DPD at the moment. Good, thank you. That's interesting. Sorry, I assumed because this was a Scottish conversation, you'll be distributing whiskey. But apologies. Ah, uh, that's that. all right. No worries at all. We like gin too. We do like gin. <laughs> Not fussy, still Christmas cheer. Absolutely. <laughs> Good, thank you. Um, and the other thought that I had yesterday, we, we ran this webinar yesterday, and one of the people who was on the call was uh, Sarah from Tamar Valley Food Hubs down in Plymouth. And she sent through an email, I'm just going to share my screen, um, which I think might be of interest. So she was talking about the fact that she... Um, a new customer um, let's just get this full screen every time a new customer um, arrives at her website she sends out an email along these lines uh, and she, she sent me this last night which says a little bit about thank you for the order um, uh, a little bit about feedback and wanting people to to give feedback on on the whole ordering process particularly for, for, for a new shopper um, finding out what works for them what doesn't work for them uh, giving them a chance to sign up to a weekly newsletter earlier in this webinar about linking your open food network to MailChimp so you can communicate with people. Um, there's a bit here about packaging and the, uh, obviously particularly the sort of people who buy from a food hub are very much into reducing packaging particularly plastic um, so the, a food hub trying to do a bit more of that recycling and reusing um, and then, yeah, just a little bit more about when they open and, and when they close. So, again, I wonder, Rosie, if, if any of this, is, uh, do you do this sort of thing already with Bowhouse? House? Um, we do in a, in a certain way. We, we send out, so all of our, when we've got new customers, they get added to our weekly newsletter and we send out a newsletter saying, but, um, this week's shop front is now open. Here's the new produce. Here's a here's a trader highlight. Here's someone we love this week, um, or here's a produce that we love this week. Here's a recipe. Um, give us your feedback. But targeting um, people we've who we've lost who we've missed who we've gone out of touch with is something that we have chatted about for a long time, and I've just not gotten around to. Um, and there's ways that we can do that. We can filter. Uh, we've kind of got our own data that we we gathered from the reports that we pull and we can filter when people have shopped and not shopped and um, so yeah I think target the thing is is what you if I put myself on the other side of the fence for this when I get emails from co companies going we miss you where are you I find it a little bit off-putting if I'm being really honest I'm kind of like don't tell me when I've got to shop I'll shop when I want to shop so I do kind of got to trade carefully a little bit. Maybe that's just me and I'm annoying, but I think this sort of email would be really nice to send out and say, 
here's the here's what we've done. I think the approach I would take would be I would give the information of how much money has been donated to the food bank. So we did a nice uh, email out to everyone to say we've nearly you know you guys have nearly donated two thousand pounds since the start to the local food bank. This is an incredible achievement. Please keep supporting this, supporting our local producers. Here's a good story of because the stock has been sold through Bow House Link, this producer has managed to buy a tractor wheel or something like that. Just a really like on the ground, nice story that just sort of says, because of you and your support, this has happened. Um, it's definitely something we need to be better at. And I think we, we have fallen into like a weekly here's the new information, here's this. And it's really easy just to fall into that kind of rhythmic of putting posts out and putting newsletters out. But um, I think something like this would tailored to your hub or your producer would be um, really beneficial. Yeah. Good. Thank you. And on that subject of, of social media and you know not getting too stuck in a rhythm, this is one of the things that Kay and Louise provide on, on a Wednesday, uh, on a Wednesday afternoon at 4.30. Is a, is a drop in session to to look at how your how your food hub is working generally not just the marketing of it but but we have done quite a lot of work on on social media content and sometimes it's helpful to get together with other shop front managers to to chew the fat a bit and have a bit of a blether about what's working and what's not working in terms of um, social media ideas and um, doing that collectively as a group can work really well I know we're, we're coming towards the end of the time. Anna, are there any questions? I haven't been keeping an eye on the, on, the, on the chat. There's a couple of lovely comments, especially Helen, who's just um, talking about how really it is lovely to hear about our focuses on feeding our local communities, because there's a tendency for people from further away to want to buy high quality produce, but then at some point that really stops being local. And just a lovely idea that if we all focus on local, eventually everybody will have great produce locally. And so... Um, I just thought it was a really nice one, idea. One thing that we have had, we unfortunately have, we've made it really clear on our page when where we can deliver to and where we are happy for people to travel from to collect the produce. So we've had people emails, put orders through from Edinburgh and Glasgow just recently um, saying, we're coming to get our produce on Saturday. And we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, thank you so much for supporting this. We're really pleased but you are now traveling from a tier three area to a tier two. We're really fortunate that we're in a tier two area, um, but here is some amazing produce in your area. So just having a bit of um, information in your back pocket to say, um, thank you so much for supporting us, but here's other OFN producers that are doing something similar in, in Edinburgh or in Glasgow or around your area. And that does take a bit of time to go back and apologize and, and make that messaging clear. And also then just say, when we can, we, we will keep you on our database and we will welcome you back. Please do keep shopping with us. Um, but obviously right now, COVID, we just can't have people flood. And that's something for our events that is really, really tricky for us right now. Um, I've done very little promotion that's targeted. To, normally we see most of our footfall coming from Edinburgh and Glasgow and we just can't see that in November and December. That's it it goes ahead and um, so yeah side of caution I think a little bit and that's something that lots just just now lots of parts of Scotland and I know England will as well have to think about really I think that that's really important and I know that um, I'm in Pilofri so we've been having lots of people coming and sometimes it gets a bit scary because it's like well where's the point of having the tears but then at the same time it's really interesting having people over so it's, it's a tricky one so I'm pretty impressed how you've managed to actually address it in a very effective way because I mean just giving people options sometimes it's all they need yeah and just being really honest I think obviously putting the information out there people I mean I don't read information so you know how do I expect putting information as clearly as possible really short information and um, on your page front on your shop front just seeing what we can and can't do. And people are normally really understanding um, and, and are fine about it. But yeah, if you can offer us another suggestion to, to avoid them just nipping to the local Tesco or supporting their producers, then do try to, because OFN, you can even just send them the map and show them the other options. 
when did Bauhaus actually start preparing for your Christmas tree? Have you been preparing for a while now? Is it something that you're starting to do? We, yeah, we've been preparing for a while now. Um, I think because our Christmas, our actual physical Christmas market is planned so far in advance. We've had our traders booked for the, the actual physical market you know, since uh, June, really. Um, and we can have that fully planned. And then the week before, it can all change last minute. So for us, Bowhouse Link planning, which so Bowhouse Link is our online weekly market, which we run through OFN, sort of planning for Christmas started probably um, end of September, to be honest, because we really just needed to talk to the traders um, sound out kind of wh whether they were committing to being part of Bowhouse Link over Christmas, what they could do and what they couldn't do, whether we were going to ask more of our um, actual traders that come to the market weekends to take part in Bowhouse Link. So because we're kind of the middleman um, in our OFN page between uh, the consumer and the producer, we really had to start probably a bit earlier because we can't officially manage our stock ourselves. You know, we're not in the fields harvesting with the team and um, they really need a little bit more notice sort of, to pull it all together. So what we decided to do was we have a weekly order cycle that runs, opens on a Monday morning, runs for orders until the Wednesday midday. Then our, the, the, all the traders have time to... Um, harvest, butcher, do everything they need to do to create the stock um, and then stock drop on the Friday and picking pack and delivery and collection on Saturday. So we quite quickly realized that Christmas was a Friday um, and we wanted to obviously open up our Christmas order cycle for a longer period of time. So it wasn't just open for three days. So it was open for a month. So what we chose to do was to, we're, we will be opening two order cycles at the same time with uh, where customers can go on and select whether which order cycle they want to buy from. So in theory, you can order, what we're doing is we're opening on the 30th of November and running for orders until the sort of 18th of December. And then that gives our traders enough time to collate their Christmas stock but at the same time underneath this Christmas thing there's the weekly order cycles that's running at the same time and because Bowhouse Link the way that we the reason it was set up was for to keep people connected continually weekly with um, their essentials so that will we will we will still offer our milk our bread everything that you need um, in your weekly shop and we're encouraging our traders to add their extra bits and bobs that they want to add, you know, they want to sell more of or their Christmas specials into the Christmas order cycle. And all of them have got on board. So it's, it's, um, but again, this is our first year doing it. So we're going to make mistakes and we're going to realize it's going to be a bit mental. And a good point um, was brought up from, I think, Sally about, um, how do we monitor the numbers? And that's something I've thought of, of, you know, if we look away for two, three hours, oh, crikey, right, I've got a hundred orders and I've only got two days for this collection point. So I think we'll just have to have a bit of a staff rota almost between a couple of people that monitor the page, just to sort of say, let's keep a tabs on this. Let's keep keep updating it. Make sure the traders are also, if they, if they sell out of their stock, can they actually create more stock and upload that? They then need to let us know so we can refresh the order cycle page and make sure it's it's all on the page and current. So it, I, I, it will be a real challenge. But I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm excited. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is actually really interesting because there's loads of marketing and um, product ideas that I hadn't really considered. So I'm really pleased that Tay and Louise covered those things because... Um, they're all it'd be interesting to hear other people's thoughts on the vouchers we've kind of nick and i have chatted about you know promo codes and things i know that's not an option on the site yet and also because we're the hub we can uh, doing hampers and things are really tricky because if i was to upload a hamper and say to the traders what do you want in the hamper that stock level is just the hamper so I can when when the when the stock um, numbers go out to the traders and um, they that stock number of what goes into the hamper isn't in their spreadsheet so they could quite easily miss that stock 
and I'm going, I've got 15 hampers that you need to fill. And they're like, but I've not got that chocolate to go in. So it's, it's something that we've thought of and we kind of didn't want to buy off, bite off too much this year. Sorry, Sarah, were you going to say something? Uh, so what we do with our hampers is we ask um, our producers to provide us with um, some stock on sale or return. So we've got all the produce, you know, especially if it's an ambient hamper, which ours are because we post them, etc. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have all the products. Um, and so we can keep a track of it that way. And then at the end, we know how many hampers we've sold. We know what's in them. We know how much we need to pay everybody and we can give them back whatever we haven't sold or ask them for more. It is a bit of a faff, but um, yeah, I think it's yeah, worth it. Probably a worthwhile faff, actually, because I think we, I mean, a lot of our site is fresh and and is, is the stock that we have, we already have on site. So we just say to the traders, you don't need to do a weekly stock drop because it's cider or it's jam or it's something and they just watch the stock tick down. Um, so that's probably quite a good idea. We could do like a, a non-perishable hamper that then we could do sale or return. I hadn't really thought about that. That's a nice idea. Sorry, Nick, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I, I'm just playing with this hamper idea. I'm wondering if we could say to our customers, if you want to make your own hamper, could we say to customers, if you want to put in a specific order, which is just for a particular hamper, that you could order an empty hamper as a product, and then you could order a bottle of whiskey and a packet of cheese and a blah, 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 and they would make their own hamper. And and you, you would, I'm not quite sure how you'd do this, but you'd then know that that was a hamper order and the that would then go through with all the other orders and it would get delivered from the producer but then you would make that up to be a customized hamper for that customer. Would that work? Or I don't know. I think yeah. that would work, Nick. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Nick, go going along that line is similar to what I am suggesting. You could put like gift wrapping as a shipping method so that then if they chose, so they don't have to choose like the hamper as a product, but if they just chose like the variety of products to go in the hamper and then when they checked out, they checked the shipping method hamper option and paid a little bit extra, then they get it all sorted in a come to them in a hamper. And I think I think Sally's got a point she wants to make, but I yeah. think to clarify there, Louise, I think what the that the customer would need to know that everything that they chose in that order was going to get wrapped up and sent out to somebody else. So they couldn't put their regular their regular shopping order and the hamper order in as one order. They need to do two separate orders. Yeah. Yeah, we were just going to, to do similar to have, have the empty hamper. So there'd be a, a basic charge for the hamper and then you could choose what goes in it as well as having a separate one, which is just a 35 pound one or a 19 pound one where we we sort of say this is roughly what you'd get and it would almost be not decided. You'd say, well, you definitely get an apple juice. You definitely get some sort of pickles. And so it wouldn't be um, completely specific. But what we wanted the Christmas button for was that really to be able to say um, if you're choosing your own hamper, you'd you'd choose the chutney that said the Christmas button so that when we were packing up their weekly box, we'd know what was going in the hamper. So for me, that's the logistical thing I'd like to be able to sort out um, so that I could just say to you know the customers can say, well, this is a Christmas button. Therefore, it's part of my hamper choice. It's not just my weekly marmalade. Um, so that's yeah, that'd like some advice on that, really. And I think one way we might get around that is to have an order cycle that was a hamper order cycle. So if somebody wants to order a hamper, they would go to that specific hamper order cycle. Would that be the way to do it? And then there'd be products there that people could put into a hamper. I mean, Louise, your idea was having a shipping method that was the hamper. I don't know. I'm talking myself around and around in circles here. Somebody help me. I think the separate order cycle for hampers would be a really good idea because um, then it means that people go on that shop for, on that page specifically knowing they want a hamper. They they're not going on to buy any other produce, um, and or they know that if they buy something else, it, everything they buy goes in that hamper. Um, and. Sorry. So yeah. it might be for Rosie that there'd be three concurrent order cycles. There might be the regular weekly order cycle. There might be the, the Christmas order cycle where people are ordering, putting their Christmas turkey order in and so on. And there might be a hamper order cycle for people who want to order specific hampers. 
Yeah, that is definitely an option. I think the way that we pick and pack just now, that might throw a curveball just with training staff and things like that. But I think just what we've been chatting about, I, for us, we're quite... Um, uh, something that sprung to mind would be sort of a build your own. So if a, a product that Bowhouse Link could sell would be the packaging, the wrapping, the small box, the big box. And then because our customers do their weekly shop, their milk, their eggs, they want to keep those, but they want to give Betty down the road a nice hamper. Um, so they can order all the bits and bobs, wrap it themselves. And then, you know, we can give them a little card with the Bowhouse and they can write their own note and things like that. So they make it personal. For, for their gift giving. So yeah, that's a, that's a good idea that I hadn't really thought of. So I'm writing it down. <laughs> Rosie, I really like that because especially this year where we're kind of all locked in um, sort of at home, I think that gives engenders something in the customer because it gives them something to do and they feel part of that gift, like it's a handmade gift, even though they've already done the packaging, they can still feel part of it. Yeah, and then they can add their own little things in, their shortbread or whatever. And actually, you're right, doing something creative just now where people can wrap something themselves is might be quite nice, actually. Um, and you then might... it doesn't look up stock for, for me, <laughs> selfishly. You might find that if people want to give it to their grandparents, um, they get they can include like a drawing from their grandchild to their grandma or whatever, and that'd be a really nice. So you could kind of market it in that sense as well. Like, yeah, interesting. Um, what else were we going to talk about? I, I was going to I was going to pick up on something that um, Kay said about how difficult this Christmas is going to be for people and what people might be missing is a sense of togetherness and a sense of, of community and that, that's one of the things that our food hubs do provide you know is, is a sense of of being part of something bigger and um, I was thinking of it in several ways one is that people through their food hubs get a connection to their farmers and their growers and the people who produce their food locally and that we can we can sort of build that as part of um, I mean, we've got to be careful that we don't upset people by you know, reminding them that they won't be with their families. But we could say, you know, by shopping with Bowhouse or Stroudco or Tamar or whoever, you are you are building your connections with the people who grow your food, not just for Christmas, but growing your food throughout the year. You're also making connections with you know the other shoppers who are supporting this food hub and supporting these farmers and these growers and. And just the whole marketing thing of when you shop with a food hub, you are together, you are part of something that has a heart to it, a lot more so than if you go down to Tesco and fill your trolley at Tesco. That's one thing, sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting, but one thing I saw recently on social media was, um, it was something like, don't, don't support Amazon. You know, I know you can't go out shopping and you can't, you can't go and do the things you normally would to fill your stockings. Why not support your local producer, your local grower, your local farmer? And I think everyone in OFM has that collective, we all want to ride that wave and really push that through because that couldn't be more true right now is supporting local farmers and producers and growers and hubs and everyone that's involved you know, we're all in we're all in it together with the same mission and i think that that's that could be a really nice talking point as well there's something else is going to i also but on that community point literally just had another brainwave that i mean a lot of hubs maybe won't be able to do this but one thing i would love to do would be obviously right now we can't connect our consumers, our customers with the growers and producers, but that's one event that I would love to have. For example, we would do a, a meet the makers supper club. So at the end of COVID, get it out the window, once we can have a supper club or some kind of event where the customers could buy a ticket, it wouldn't be much or it would be something, it would be their membership for the year. And then they would come along, they would meet our veg growers, they'd meet the butcher, they'd meet the bread maker and almost have like a big long table dining experience. That's quite a nice marketing tool as well. You can kind of say, you know, you're, you're part of this community, come and learn more about the produce. 
I'm hesitant to do it yet because I just don't know when we'll be allowed to do it. But I, I think people would buy into it even if they didn't know what the date was because they want to be part of it. I don't know whether anyone else has done something like that before or I'd, whether... I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear from some of the really experienced people like Sarah, you know, around previous Christmas, because Sarah's probably done 10, 20 different Christmases through, through, <laughs> through Tamar now. So it'd be really good to hear from you. But just while I... While I respond to Rosie's point, I'm. I think that's a really sweet idea, the idea of of connecting with the growers. And I wonder if we have to wait until the end of COVID to do that. I did a, a session with um, Slow Food Birmingham the other day as part of the Terra Madre conference, and they they got one of their um, one of their butchers to actually do a little video, and he took us around his butcher shop and he and he showed us some of the the, the cattle that he was rearing and, and then the farm shop where the where the meat was laid out and it was just really nice to make sure to see this to see this person who was the person who was rearing the meat and preparing it and selling it and whether we could do a sort of online version of that where we could eat, get each of the growers maybe just to talk to the camera maybe to take us around their farm maybe to show us their kitchen if they're making cakes and puddings and that sort of thing and then yeah have that on our on our websites on our social media as a sort of meet the grower meet the producer session you could even let them sort of like take over certain days or in the coming time to christmas in the time coming to christmas and make it sort of like a takeover mm -hmm. and they can talk about the products uh, one it's sort of like it makes social media a bit easier because then you have a lot of a platitude of voices talking about different products but also it, it fosters that community which we're all missing at the moment um, there's quite often, if you look on Instagram, they quite often have things called Meet the Maker Week. I think there's one at the moment for craft enterprises. Um, so, yeah, you could um, set up that quite easily and have it throughout the year, not just at Christmas. And um, like uh, what Anna just said, you can do um, Insta takeovers where one business runs a, the Instagram account for another. I, I love the the Instagram takeovers but I am a bit of a control freak and our social media is kind of very <laughs> I am um, yeah people would be like Rosie this is a great image and I'm like it doesn't meet the cut I'm sorry so I love the idea of people taking over our social media pages but we've worked really hard on it <laughs> so pardon me but yeah I think it does work really well on the right scenario even stories and things like that. I think loads can be done in stories because it's kind of flash images where people don't have to commit to liking something. Um, but yeah, definitely. I think there's lots of different ways. It's a shame for us at Bow House because we're really, we're really like, I don't know if the word's tactile, but really want to be um, with people and having people experience it with their senses, seeing it, smelling it, tasting it. And COVID's making that pretty, pretty difficult. So. Yeah, I think community feel is something that we could definitely rally around um, this Christmas. And and I think for us, it's COVID's actually made um, Bow House less of just being a market weekend. We were just sort of known as this monthly market weekend. And, and we really wanted to come away from that to be more of a food hub with all these amazing producers that are under our roof. And that's something that's um, that actually I think OFN has helped hugely with and actually will will boost into Christmas and our order cycle as well. So one of the things I wanted to ask you, Rosie, um, was about your, your products, the particular products that your producers are producing and, and particularly specialist products that are focused on Christmas. And it may be that there's other people on the call who've also got ideas of things that you're existing producers might add to their to their product list so you know if there's somebody who normally makes cakes are they now making mince pies as well you know that sort of thing um, and also if there's any new producers who you're bringing in you know specifically for christmas so i wondered if you know from the bow house perspective if you could just give us some ideas of special products and also if there's anybody else on the call who wants to chip in with with other ideas yeah so again when we went out to all the traders a couple of weeks ago, first of all, we approached our traders that are on, uh, that are regular on, regularly on Bowhouse Link, and we said, "Okay, guys, we've got these order cycles that are happening weekly, and then we've got our extended one, which is our Christmas order cycle. And um, you have these options. If 
if you are a perishable product, you might want to just upload a certain stock and watch it tick down, but that stock that you upload, and if you're part of both order cycles, will tick down from both order cycles. If you only want that product to tick down from the Christmas order cycle, you need to make that clear and we select it in the Christmas order cycle. So it was a really tricky um, to describe it to the traders in, a, in one letter where we've got everything from beer or something that's not perishable to, you know, freshly baked croissants or, you know, turkeys. And um, the traders really had to detail to us what they wanted it where, and we we're just going to have to sort of formulate that. We have encouraged traders to do Christmas specials. So we've got a, a, a spice company who's going to be doing mulled wine um, infusers, which is really nice. And they actually want theirs to be in the weekly order cycles in December and the big one. So it just means that people can buy they're going to be getting it earlier, if that makes sense, because it's not a perishable item. Um, so we've just been really open with our traders and said, what works best for you? And, and that just means that we have to kind of be on top of it and make sure that what they're requesting is what we've um, edited on their page. We've also said to them uh, during this time to make quick changes, it's maybe good for you to give us either part permission to their page or full permission to editing their products. Um, just because that makes it quicker for us to say, to log on, change something that they've maybe just misspelled or maybe just uploaded incorrectly, um, rather than having to be like, you've done this wrong, which is a bit embarrassing, you know, or can, can you change this? It's just a longer process, really. And most of them are just, they're happy for us to help with that a little bit. I know that some shops charge a little bit extra for, for editing and permission um, help from, from the hub, if you like but it kind of just makes our life a little bit easier. So we just kind of quickly go and make those changes. Um, so yeah, with our traders, we, uh, we've had some more traders come on board. So for example, we've had a local distillery who really wants to be involved and they've got these lovely Christmas packs, um, which are an almost a gift in themselves. We've not really opened it up to many craft traders um, just because our craft trader, traders normally attend our physical market weekends and the company that we deal with, they have their own online system that they that they sell through and they do an amazing job. So we like we quite like to sort of separate that and we're the food hub and that's what we specialize in and, and the kind of craft hub district, they do their thing. And um, so it's not something we've faced massively. Um, one thing we've had to do is just sort of make sure that um, traders have kind of fallen out of practice of how they um, uh, upload their products or how they name their products so just making sure that, that it's in the right category also that it's got the right tax on it because that just makes it an issue at the other end when you've got stripe and things coming into play and um, and just kind of keeping an eye on things it's 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 i said this to nick recently that um that i had to go back into the site recently and just and kind of go through everything again because so much had changed since march and bits and bobs have been changed by different people, kind of just refreshing yourself before the new year. I also think that you can plan everything till Christmas and then you're like, whew, Christmas is done, right? I'll just sit back, have a cup of tea. But actually, you know, before you know it, you're into January, you don't want to lose that momentum and you don't want your customers to go, oh, well, I shopped, you know, with them during Christmas. I won't bother now in January. Actually getting into people's good habits in January, you know, the whole, better me and gym and things like this. Actually, if you can kind of catch people at that moment um, and, and get into the, you might get new customers in January. I'm hoping we're gonna see that because they're gonna tell their friends, they're gonna pass on gifts and say, oh, where'd you get this? Bowhouse link, oh great, I'm gonna shop there. So I think for us, we're, I've already spoken to all the traders about January. We're having a week off just so people can sleep. Um, and then and then we're coming back at it for the week of the 11th and um, so just sort of telling them this is what's happening in January they know what stock they've got to create how much they drop off um, and and then we'll roll into sort of uh, February in the darker months but that that would be my advice is from, from previous experience of events and and other things at Bow House actually Christmas isn't the end game sometimes looking into the new year's 
is kind of when you need to just it's peace of mind as well and then you can relax over Christmas when you know you've already planned January um, did that answer the question of waffling again? Yeah, no, no, it did, it did. And it's provoked another question from Sarah about cross-selling uh, different products and whether your whiskey producer would be willing to sell through other OFN shop fronts. And I, I guess there's absolutely no reason why not. We just need them to give permission to Tamar to add their whiskey. Do you want to come in there, Sarah? Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking this, like everybody is going to be posting gifts around the country this year, aren't they? And either they're going to be ordering them from, you know, the classic one is order something from Amazon to send to, you know, your granny or whatever. Why aren't we doing, why can't we do the same sort of thing? Um, whether that's about just sign, you know, us saying, oh, did you know that you can shop with Bow House and somebody will post a bottle of whiskey to your dad? Um, or it's something that we can have in our order cycle. I'm, I'm not sure the best way of doing it. It's just something that came out of my head. Yeah, it might yeah. Be good. yeah I like that. I wonder whether it's, whether it's just promoting one another or whether there's some sort of um, order through Bow House link delivery address down south. I, to your hub and then it goes out in the hub. I don't know, but that's possible, yeah. Especially if it was in the, I mean, it might be good for Louise to come in here, but if I was thinking if it was in the Christmas order cycle, so you're taking whiskey orders, you know, for a month and then one order goes off to the, to the distillery and they all get delivered together to Tamar. So that would save on delivery fees. Um, we'd have to think about the pricing. With, yeah, but it's, yeah. And Louise, you've unmuted. Have you got thoughts on that? Um. I'm not sure how, I'd, I'd, I think I'd have to think about it more. I think it, I like the idea of um, the customer buying direct from Bow House and then getting it posted to someone because it, I suppose overall my thoughts are that it could come all the way from Scotland to Cornwall and then be posted again to Belfast, you know? Mm -hmm. Where is it? <laughs> you, you, it might be just better to go from direct from the place to the person who wants it. Um, um, I don't know how much time we've got. And I've got some other things I want to talk to Rosie about. Um, one was uh, vouchers and subscriptions, uh, Louise's idea about buying forward. So helping people um, use the OFN subscriptions thing where you could say to, uh, uh, as a gift, you could say to people, you know, I've, I've bought you, you know, a uh, five pound credit on Bowhouse uh, shopping, shopping at Bowhouse through all of January and February, you know, um, and somebody could sort of pay, pay forward for somebody to have a regular order with Bowhouse. And also the idea of, of using vouchers as a, as a gift option. Is that something that you've considered or something that? It is, and it's something that I think would would work well because it will then encourage new customers to get involved. There, there's an incentive there for them to, to shop and then enjoy it, hopefully, and then shop again. The only thing that holds me back is, is really the admin of it. It's really the it's the fact that then customers can't just log on and the money's sitting there. They then need to get in touch with us. We then, then need to create, it doesn't take long, create their name, put in their email address and tag them with a discount, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but I know that if I, I would feel guilty, if I didn't get to some, you guys know I'm terrible at emails. If I didn't get to someone's email within a day, I would be, a, I, as a customer, I'd be a bit like, oh, I want to shop now. Why can't they add that discount to my page right now? Um, but maybe you detail that on the voucher. You say, get in touch with Market at Bowhouse. Um, this can, please email, we need this information from you. You put it on the back or a QR code and they just have to scan and it takes it to the email address. Um, please, we, please give us 24 hours to add this discount to your, to your page. Um, it's really just um, admin that's holding me back on that, which we could do, but. Yeah, no, I really get that. And it reminds me of a, a couple of points earlier in the webinar that I meant to talk about. One was about uh, product stock levels. I wasn't sure if I misunder misunderstood you, Rosie. I thought earlier you said that if a producer 
has a limited amount of stock and starts to sell out and then they refresh their stock levels that you have to refresh your order cycle and i just want to clarify that if a producer as long as a product is added to an order cycle as soon as the producer increases the stock level that will appear on your stock front you, you don't have to refresh your order cycle if the stock levels change only if a new product is added yeah right i probably worded that incorrectly but if they made a new product yeah. they need to let me know so i can add that new product in um, but yeah and also but then if they tell me they've got new stock then i can do a lovely push on it there's more turkeys sort of thing or you know um then that that's always quite a nice promotion as well it's I think the point, I think it was Louise's point of, uh, I tr it's trying to get traders to um, to monitor their stock is tricky and lots of them just want to say, oh, I can produce whatever. And that's something that I put in my notes to them to say, look, we really need you to honor the orders. I Obviously, Bow House Link is a third party for them. You know, they're selling their own products, their own in their own means through their own e-commerce sites and their own other ways. So sometimes I, I would worry that Bow House Link would be at the bottom of the pile for them. And they would say, oh, I've not got enough stock. So Bow House Link doesn't get it this week, which would be really, it's our relationship with our customers um, that's on the line there. And it's me that has to disappoint someone over, over the phone, over the email, which we really want to avoid. So we've also said to traders, look, if you're up, we prefer that you upload stock. If it is infinite, then can you think about what the substitution is? So if you can't do that, what's a really good alternative that you can do? What can you substitute in for? Or is it, you know, two halves to make a whole? Or what, what's, what's the substitution there so that we're not you know disappointing our customers and then in the long run upsetting people and, and kind of damaging our reputation so yeah yeah no I, I really get that that's I think that's really important that's something we've been really hot on with with our food hub is that it is essential that if you say you've got that stock then you do deliver it and you know we've we've actually had to stop selling certain producers products because they weren't consistent they weren't able to deliver because it is such a reputational issue of you know not being able to deliver to a customer and it's Bowhouse or it's Strauko that takes the hit it's not the producer that takes the hit and the other thing I wanted to come back to was a point that was made I think Sally made it it was about how to, how to limit the number of orders and we it was definitely an issue for a lot of hubs I know Tamar had it and Strauko had it during the first lockdown that we were hitting a maximum number of orders and we were having to to stop uh, close order cycles early because we, we had too many orders and it is a bit of an issue we are working on having a limit so that OFN and Louise is about to come in but before you come in Louise I just wanted to say that at the moment because there isn't a limit what what we were doing with Stroco is watching that orders page and it does refresh and just you know when it hit, when it gets close to our limit then um, you know, be just watching it carefully. And what we were doing overnight is closing the order cycle temporarily overnight, so that we we didn't get. Yeah, Louise, you need to come in. Go on, I'll come back when you when you said your point. Um, yeah, I've just talked to Lynn. Um, she can offer that as an integration. So if anyone does want to know, uh, have a limit for their number of orders per order cycle, then that's something we can do. There's no need to stay up all night. Um, and have shifts to look at your order cycle. It's something that can be done. Okay. That's impressive, Louis. Did you sort that integration out while we were on the webinar just now? That is deeply impressive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. Good. So yes, that I'm is... I'm going to give one last question because we're almost on time. Okay. Uh, is there a question in the chat, Anna, or is, do you do you want us to blather for another two minutes? No, you can blather for an extra four minutes. I was just sort of like preparing myself for a long conversation here, just in case. Okay. So, so go ahead, but just if you have some final ideas or some uh, key tips that you think everybody should know before right. we go. And again, if someone's desperate to continue this conversation, remember that tomorrow you can join us. Yeah, we're doing the same thing again tomorrow morning um rosie i don't know if you've got one but i've got one and i've got one i want i could use is that okay if i go which is this uh, one of the, again one of the points that Kay made about new customers that 
we will see a lot of customers coming to our food hubs just for Christmas. And it would be, it's such a shame that they then go back to Tesco <laughs> in January. And I really like the idea of actually looking at these new customers and being really interested in what have they ordered? You know, where are they living? Who are they? And maybe spend sending specific email to them. You know, I noticed this is the first time you placed an order. Really nice to see you here. You do realize that we do this all year round. You know, these are some of the things. And maybe, you know, if, if you want to spend, if you spend more than X amount during December, then we will give you a X percent discount off any January orders just to, so that we can build that habit into January and not have this massive boost in orders and then a drop in, in January orders. It's, um, yeah, we, we do um, that anyway. Sorry, Rosie. Okay. You go. No, no, you go, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, every week we pick out new new customers and email them. I'm quite happy to share the, the text of that um, email around. That would be good. It's something we, we go out with a weekly newsletter and all of our customers um, get that weekly newsletter. And it's a kind of a reminder and a what's new on the site, what's seasonal. Um, but one thing I would quite like to do is a sort of not just for Christmas um, sort of promotion of, you know, we're here all the time. If you order over £50, you can get a discount on your a sack order, I think it's called on the site. Um, so yeah, it's something that we do with our delivery that if you order over something, you get it back. So I think that's a good point is the, the January, as much the, the problem I'm gonna have is that it, yes, recruiting customers and keeping them in January is gonna be tricky, but actually a lot of my traders have very little stock in January. So lots of my bakers are fine, the butchery will be fine, but the veg growers, you know, into the dark winter months, they're going to really struggle to have stock. You know, it's it's not either if it's the ground's hard, they can't harvest. These are kind of on the ground, if you like, on the ground pun, um, real problems that I we're going to have to manage. And I'm not really sure. Our market weekends don't run in January and February because people are sick of food a little bit. And it's just too dark and our traders have a break as well. Um, so it's, I think January is going to be, it's going to be okay if it's quiet, I think, because if we don't have the stock, then customers are going to be disappointed. If I have like a flurry of customers who now want to shop all the way through January, um, amazing, but some of them might be disappointed. So it's kind of about, because we're the middleman again, it's about that kind of scale and that balance between what stock our traders can produce and supply to us and how many customers we have. So um, balancing act. Good point, Rosie. And I just want to say to Candace that there's a, a comment in the chat from Alistair, which is really helpful about uh, alcohol licensing. Um, so that, that might be useful to have oh, a look. Okay. Great. Thank you, Rosie. Over to you, Anna. Over to me. Also, just to let you know, Sarah, uh, it would be great. Candace and Pantry are saying that it would be great to have a newsletter example. And this is something I never thought of, but uh, they're in Wales, so it should have it would have to be bilingual. So interesting little thing. It might be a little touch as well if you're in different parts of the country where they speak more than one language to just have it bilingual and sort of like a nice touch. So yeah, Candice, we'll we'll make sure that comes up on the on the Facebook group, Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group. And I'm gonna put the I'm gonna ask Kay to put the link to that Facebook group in the chat so that we, you can find Sarah's newsletter and all the resources in the Facebook group. And also just to let you know, we're gonna be collecting all the information of what we've talked today. Uh, I'm happy to put together a long list of what we talked today and whatever we talk tomorrow, any resources that pop up and just making sure that we share it with everyone so that you don't have to start Googling desperately and sort of like starting and stopping the recording afterwards. So you can just enjoy this conversation and everything. What can I say? Just Kay, Louise, Nick, Rosie, Sarah, everyone else, Alistair, Candace, I'm reading all the names now, uh, Sandra, just thank you so, so much for coming. I think it was, it was, at least for me, it was a fascinating discussion. I could have stayed for hours, um, but I think that the light is sort of like telling me enough for today. Again, if someone has is desperate to re to relive this conversation, we're going to be um, 
having it again tomorrow for people who are more of a, uh, early birds and want to start the day with this. So we're doing it tomorrow at 9.30, but we'll share the recording, we'll share everything else so that you can have all these resources because we believe that this is a unique opportunity. It's such a weird year. And it's a great opportunity to sort of like bring people together, like you were saying, with communities through food, even if you cannot be sitting in the same table. So thank you everyone for participating. Thank you everyone for uh, coming and again, presenters so much food for thought i had so much fun i like that you're sort of like doing the weird clap as well rosie i did it sort of like out of instinct and then i wanted to be under the table a little bit <laughs> so thank you very much for participating and again hope to see you soon remember that there's lots of seminars that are going to be happening and the ofn always has amazing seminars for you to make the most of of the platform and of food hubs good night <laughs>